Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson. I'm the host of the podcast. Joining me on our podcast this week is Dr. Megan Heinemann. Uh, Dr. Heinemann is a clinical professor at Iowa State University in the Department of Diagnostic and Production Animal Medicine. And Dr. Heinemann has a very uh, unique role where she is a practicing veterinarian at the university working on their ambulatory team. Dr. Megan, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you. Why don't you share a little bit with uh, the audience about yourself, your background, and how you came to work with pigs? So um, I graduated vet school at Iowa State University in 2018, um, went out and practiced for a little stint, and then came back to the university as a postdoc um, to get my master's as well as um, continuing to get boarded in ABVP, in food animal medicine. Um, I'll be honest, I actually grew up with cattle. It wasn't until my an internship uh, at Alanco Animal Health that they introduced me into the swine world. And that's kind of where I fell in love with swine medicine, the production side. Um, and it kind of took off from there. And so... Coming back from Iowa State, or coming back to Iowa State, we had some pigs in our practice area. No one really kind of took hold of them at that point on the more niche side. So niche includes show pigs, pet pigs, and then I have some uh, backyard kind of farm to table pigs as well. And so I kind of took ownership of that. And basically my day-to-day -day job is working with clients on a one-to-one -one level, I always have students with me and I get to teach them how to take production pig concepts and put them down to an individual farm and even down to an individual animal level. So the concepts are the same. It's just all the way down to a one-on-one -on -one individual pig level. Um, the cool thing about that is I still get my niche of pigs. I I love working with the producers. Um, the other benefit of that is I love getting to work with the exhibitors. The exhibitors are excited about the project. They're passionate. Um, and it really kind of invigorates me as a practitioner um, to do best for not only their pig, but also them and try and set them up for success um, for their future in the pork industry. So I kind of get to be that, I guess, try and be that mentor in the swine industry to them because most of them don't have contact um, with my mentors that I had in the swine industry, especially on the production side. And so I get the joy of being kind of involved in that, so. A full value relationship starts with understanding your business and Alanco knows growing the healthiest pig requires focus on every segment of production. Through continuous innovation, trusted solutions, and actionable insights, Elanco is invested in helping you achieve the full value of every decision. Their portfolio offers solutions that manage disease challenges, minimize variation, and mitigate mortality to optimize pig health. Get full value from start to finish with Elanco. Um, you know, I mentioned the biosecurity thing, and that comes up a lot with commercial producers when they talk about, you know, show pig industry, uh, backyard producers, pet pigs, that sort of thing. Um, give us straight from the horse's mouth. What is biosecurity like for a smaller producer? You said the concepts are the same, right? So I know that, you know, showers and changing clothes and disinfecting things and downtimes, they all work for small producers. How well understood is biosecurity at that level and, and how well executed is it? I think how well executed it is um, in those niche populations depends on what kind of level they're performing, right? So I would kind of break the local county fair people, Freddie 4-H'er. Um, I was a Freddie 4-H'er, so nothing bad about that compared to my people that go to national shows. Um, and I think a lot of it is just their point of contact with the production industry or a vet or a mentor in the swine industry. Right. So um, most of our biosecurity is we have show boots we have um, that we go show in and then we have home boots. Um, a lot of producers are dedicated to know if you're coming to our barn, 
um, even though it doesn't look like a normal production barn, right? You're still taking off your boots. They have booties. Um, I have one farm that tours, they do agri, they're part of the agri tourism in their county. And um, they're pretty good about having hand washing stations there when those tours come in and very open about it. it. The looks are very different than a commercial operation, but the principles are the same. My goal is when I inter- integrate with those county 4-Hers and the people that are just, you know, just going to show the county show is I really open the door as far as what biosecurity looks like. Even if they're only going to go to one show and the disease risk is relatively low compared to my ones that are going national or jackpot, et cetera, um, I still get the point of contact to say, hey, biosecurity is important. But then also not only just boots, coveralls, et cetera, is I'm setting you up for success not only as you age and develop, but I'm also setting you up to success for the pork industry, right? Right. I have, I have way more mobile of a population of pigs than most confinement guys, right? Because they're coming and going every which direction, especially now we have the fall um, sale run, you know, in the summer we have the jackpots. And so it's basically kindergarten for them every year, every week. Um, and how do I mitigate that? And so the openness as far as risk of foreign animal diseases is quite large in that industry, but that means that I need to really hone in and focus on the basics of the biosecurity, disinfecting, changing boots and coveralls. Um, Some people even go as far as recording visitors um, on some of these operations. The nice thing about that is they get it, right? They only have one pig and that pig has to be an athlete. Um, It has to perform. And so they take, the nice thing is they take biosecurity to heart because they understand that if my pig gets sick because I did something careless as far as biosecurity, not understanding quarantine, not taking off my boots, et cetera, I am not going to get to show in whatever show I'm going to compete in. And that's a learned thing, right? Like it definitely depends on what level they're performing. It also depends on um, basically who their point of contact is, right? If their point of contact is a blog they're probably not going to practice the biosecurity. So I think that that's where people like myself come into play is because we can be that point source of contact for them and be a resource for them for biosecurity. Um, And then when we think about biosecurity, I think a lot, a lot of my students ask about PERS, right? Because PERS is taught, we're really, we're taught diseases and bugs in vet school. And so that's what they know. If they don't come from pig production they do know PERS. Um, And so they're like, well, are you naive? Do you have to be clean for PERS? And actually in the show pig industry, I have to be dirty. Like I, I have to be at least vaccinated stable in my herds. Um, And so really getting that point of contact, again, they're athletes, they're mingling every weekend. And so I need to make sure that they are at least vaccinated, exposed, If not, they've been exposed at some point of the year and how to mitigate that. Um, When it comes to also other foreign animal diseases, um, interestingly enough, Texas and Oklahoma are really cracking down as far as pig movements go, especially in this season. Um, That's kind of a new thing that's happening um, in the show pig world is they're actually pulling over trailers, inspecting individual individual pigs, individual identification. And I think that's huge. My producers might not love it as much, um, but it just shows that there's more investing going into biosecurity, monitoring foreign animal diseases and movement of this population. United Animal Health has been innovating nutrition that feeds the animals that feed the world since 1956. Now a multinational ag biosciences company, we help people impact the health of their animals with less labor, less variation, less drag, less challenge, and less natural resources. Learn more at unitedanh.com. You put it very well when you say, you know, their herd may be smaller, but they care just as much about their herd as any pig producer does. Uh, Appreciate all the work you're doing, not only with students, but with, um, you know, folks that maybe um, aren't involved directly in the commercial industry, but share the risk of biosecurity and foreign animal disease along with all of us. Really appreciate you coming on and sharing about that. Thank you for having me.
Ah, well, thanks for being on the show. And to our audience, thank you very much for listening. Um, please visit us at twinehealthblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out on any of our great episodes. For Dr. Megan Hyman, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. Thanks and have a great rest of your day. Hey, everybody. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H E L L O at W I S E N E T I X dot com.